Hey scrapbookers, this is Trisha at Club Scrap with the Aviary Page Kit Assembly Tutorial. Got my instructions printed, my trimmer and my accordion pocket file, and my kit with all its awesome goodies. And uh, just a real quick shout out to our brand new members who joined Club Scrap at the Irving um, Scrap and Stamp, book, Stamp Expo. It's great to have you here and I hope you enjoy and learn a lot from this tutorial. I'm going to set aside all of the ribbons and these beautiful laser cuts. Here we have some photo mats. Why don't we get those filed right out of the gates? So with my instructions, we'll find that three orange mats are used in layouts one and two. Three of the mint colored mats are used in layouts three and four. Two white photo mats and two aqua are used in five and six, and one of each of the remaining white and aqua used in seven and eight. Well, that was easy. Here we also have a lovely assortment of really cool embellishments. We've got these gorgeous, and they're huge, aren't they? Beautiful wood buttons with the birds laser cut into them, a nice bird cage charm, and then these two really adorable birds. I actually grabbed a couple extra packs and made some earrings for me and Karen <laughs> out of these. They're really adorable. And then we have two cute little bird houses with a little bird perched on the roof there. So we'll set these aside as well. And let's get our papers in trimming order. Now, those of you who are new to this, um, I always turn to page two of my instructions and put these four pieces in my stack first. So let's find this uh, really cute little birdhouse print. I'll put it face down on my trimmer base. And then we're going to look for the blue birdcage print. It's actually on a white base. Then we need a red plane and an aqua plane. Then we'll add our cut-aparts to the mix. So you'll look for, usually I start with the border strips first, and then we'll grab the um, other sheet of cut-aparts. Then I turn to the back page of my instructions and I find the papers in reverse order, starting with the base for layout eight, which in this case is red plain, and then another bird cage print, then the bird house print, aqua plain, Flip pages here, two orange planes and two mint planes. So that's the order we'll go in and I'll flip everything back over to that birdhouse print on the top and we'll turn to page two of our instructions and this is where we're going to be starting. So let's get that trimming done and all those pieces filed away. We'll place the birdhouse print into the trimmer right side up just, just like it should be and we'll cut it nine and a half and five and three quarters. The five and three quarter inch piece will be filed into pocket one and two. This next strip will be trimmed horizontally and I'm going to trim it so the the bird is on the right. It's not really going to matter but um, sometimes people want to know. Eleven and a quarter, seven and a half, and three and three quarters. Let's take the two the first two squares that we made and we'll place those in five and six. Now we have this last one with a little bird, partial bird on there. We're going to use that plain side up on seven and eight. This little scrap was not used and the long narrow strip here will go in five and six. Next we're going to take this bird uh, cage print and we're not actually going to trim it. I'm going to be using my ruler. Perhaps I'll even set this aside and we're going to do this one last after our trimmer's out of the way. So let's move on to the red plane. That'll probably just be easier. We're gonna cut this at 11. Nine and a half. And six inches. Okay, rotate the six by 12 so it's horizontal. We're gonna do our photo mat trick and cut at eight and four. Take two of the four by sixes you just made and put them in five and six, and the other in seven and eight. Pick up the very next piece, which is three and a half by 12, and trim it horizontally at nine and a half, and seven. Now the seven inch piece gets filed in pocket seven and eight, but let me just tell you where it's headed. This will end up, we'll be placing these two of these bird cages over the top of the print 
you'll trace around them just to get the shape and then cut slightly smaller than the traced shape so that we can back these cool laser cut um, bird cages with the red paper to create some contrast. So for now I'm just going to put two of these cages and the seven inch piece into the pocket seven and eight for later. Then you have these two narrow red rectangles. File both of them in five and six. There's a wider border strip that remains and then the skinnier one inch one. They both go in seven and eight. And then let's move on to the aqua. All right, we're gonna cut this at 11 and 10, seven and a quarter, and four. Do a classic rotate and cut at six. Both of these pieces are used in pages one and two. And let's trim the very next strip in the top of the stack. This measures three and a quarter inches wide right now. And we'll cut it horizontally at 11, eight and three quarters, six and a half, and four and a quarter. Take the largest piece that we just made here and put that in pocket one and two. And then we have three rectangles that are the same size. One of them goes in three and four. The other two are placed in five and six. And then we do have a one inch piece that is a scrap that will join the other. And I believe these are the only two scraps you will have in the making of this entire eight page set. And we have another piece for trim. This is two and three quarter by 12. And we'll cut it horizontally at nine and three quarters. That was nine and three quarters, six and a half three and a quarter. Hopefully you made three rectangles that are the same size. File them all in the pockets for three and four. And this last little rectangle, seven and eight. Two narrow strips, one and two. All right, let's move on still to our cut-aparts before we take care of that birdcage print um, with some tearing. Um, let's trim these border strips. Again, the rule of thumb is the narrowest piece we want to remove first. So it will be placed pretty much right side up, it will feel, in the trimmer. Our first cut takes us at about 11 inches, and then I'm just going to follow those registration marks all the way down and separate the borders. <laughs> Okay, this first widest strip, one and two. The next one, don't be scared to fly alone, five and six. The three bird houses with some bird cages, three and four. Think of the happiest things, seven and eight. The next two narrow strips with just like some leaf artwork on it, one and two. This one with the red edge, three and four. And we have this little, the little birdies on the strip, five and six. One more cut apart. Once again, we'll put the piece into the trimmer with the word details in the upper right corner. And our first cut will be at around 11 inches once again. Another narrow strip and so on. All right, this large strip goes in pocket seven and eight. And then you'll need to separate all of the pieces on this. I recommend probably putting it in this way so you can do one rotation without having to reload your trimmer base. The bird house and the tweet both go in one and two. Sing also goes in one and two and this little um, bird cage goes in three and four. We have a journaling prompt, one and two, and we'll trim apart the next strip. File this one in one and two. We have a horizontal journaling prompt and this other little journaling prompt with the bird. Both of those go in three and four. This one with the orange perimeter, five and six, and also this other guy, you're a chirp off the old block, five and six. I'm not an early bird. This one goes in seven and eight. Free as a bird, also seven and eight. This little set of three cages, seven and eight. Boy, I'm sensing a theme here. Oh, this guy, one and two. And we have these little bubbles, seven and eight. One more to trim apart into just three pieces. Again, removing the narrowest piece first. 
Okay, we've got details going into seven and eight. A lot of, I had a lot of stuff on the page. It looked really, really cool, actually. Um, don't just fly, soar. This is three and four, and smile is also in seven and eight. Now I'll set aside my trimmer and get out a ruler to help uh, tear the aqua print. All right, I'm going to position this print so that it is, I've got these, um, the top portion is going to be on my left. Now if you're left-handed, you may want to do this the other way around. Basically my goal is to remove a four inch piece from the top of this artwork. My ruler that I want to use to help me hold the paper in place while I tear is only three inches wide. So a, a great remedy to that would be to marry the ruler up with a second ruler so that you're at the one inch measurement of that second ruler and all you need to do then is now I know I'm four inches away and I'll just tear this piece that is used in layouts three and four. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to remove a four inch section of this print right here, so I'll do the same thing. Find one inch on my second ruler, so three plus one is four. And I can tear this piece of cake. It just gives me a nice little torn edge. If you want to enhance that torn edge a little bit, you can take a paper distressing tool and just kind of uh, expose a little bit more of that white core of the paper if you like and that's completely optional of course this uh, four inch portion is used in seven and eight and this is also used in three and four all right now it's time for our dry fit assembly when I'm not trying to fit everything within the space of a camera here I would do pages seven and eight at the same time but here for just for the room that we have I'm gonna work just on page eight to do that I'll take everything out of pocket eight and there is like I said quite a bit of stuff on these two layouts so just you have to kind of be patient with that um obviously we'll start with the largest chunk right here and that's going to be this uh really large um cut apart and then we have a smaller one it just happened to be the same exact height and i couldn't believe my good fortune when i started trying to do the layouts and i thought that looked kind of cool so then this aqua mat will sit vertically kind of offset from this as a decorative base to the right, I'm going to put the little smile, and as a decorative element to that, I took some of this beautiful ribbon. I already have a nice little point in that, and if you just trim this, and then you can tape it to the back, maybe on the more on the right side, on this cut apart, so you can tuck in the left edge. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? I just love it. Um, and then to that I even added one of these sweet round birdie charms. Just adorable. What a cute little thing. Um, down in the lower left corner I used that white, it's the reverse side of this piece, um, the white square, and I just tied some of the gorgeous, this was the perfect ribbon I thought for this collection with that um, harlequin pattern in the background. I just tied some ribbon around that. Here we have a smaller aqua mat and then on that just kind of tucked in beneath this cut apart I have another one the free as a bird and I created some ribbons to dangle from that after I used my craft knife and ruler to create the the V shape into this meanwhile too I also prepared by tracing around the edge of this and I cut out the shape I think what I'll do is just to kind of have this ready I'm going to cut this in half so this piece will be placed right into the outline frame that we've pre-printed onto that cut apart so that's going to live here punch a hole in the top once this is the shape of the cage and you can thread it with the really beautiful um, white satin ribbon that comes with this kit and I'll just place that on the page so it's ready for assembly here's the finished page with the red behind the birdcage and I did pop dot this with some of our foam adhesive circles. Here's the punched circle uh, from the red behind it threaded with the, the white satin ribbon. There's that beautiful harlequin pattern ribbon tied around the white and then you can see I layered all three ribbons we've included in the kit right beneath this chevron shaped cut apart. Just a beautiful page. Did some fun things on page seven that I'll tell you about. We've got some nested border strips. And when I, I was just teaching classes this past weekend in Texas, and um, 
when when students were trying to figure out where things went, oftentimes they couldn't figure out where the border strips were going. So if, if you have some plain sheets that are, you know, just thin like this, they're probably going to match up with one of your cut apart border strips. Just kind of makes it pop, adds a little more contrast to the element. So we're going to nest one of these four by six photo mats onto the white piece. And I want to mention that I did catch an error I made in the previous page. I thought I had that long narrow strip for the bird cages, but I had grabbed the photo mat by accident. So please don't make the same mistake I did. All right, so this will eventually be the shape of the cage. Then we've got another little birdhouse cut apart there. And this chevron shaped, once you remove the bottom portion, will be placed right in between all of this. So I took a piece of this gorgeous satin ribbon and I trimmed it, wrapped it around this area. And do you see the little dotted circle? That is designed to be the same size as the wood button that's included in your collection. So I'll just tape the back of the ribbon to the cut apart. And then with our book binding glue, you'll be able to glue, or you could also sew it if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. But this, this last button will be adhered right into its planned spot for a beautiful page embellishment. Here is the finished layout with everything in place, the ribbon added to the top of the cage. Now, do you see this bird cage in the middle? And right here and here is where I've created a slot with a craft knife um, that is just slightly wider than the width of the border strip. So then you can thread the border strip behind the bird cage so that that stays in the foreground. So if you look at the back, there's that border strip running through and um, you just simply need to mark where the border strip starts and ends and make a slit along the edge of the cage that's that wide. That is layout seven. Let's dump the pocket for five and six and dry fit that pair. The base for layout six is this birdhouse print and then along the right edge, we'll use this vertical border strip. And that way we can place two aqua photo mats horizontally on the left. And I did the same trick I did before. I just cut along the rooftop of this birdhouse so that I could slide the photo mat behind it. I'll show you on the finished layout. Then running across to add some contrast to the page, we'll add some of this really beautiful, it's like a gold metallic sparkle satin ribbon. It's a very special um, ribbon. And um, we can do some nesting here on the right side. I love how this turned out. So we've got a journaling uh, prompt. So if I just lay it there though, it doesn't really pop very well. With some creative cutting, I was able to create a double mat so it'll go the journaling prompt, aqua, and then red. And here we go. Finish that off by putting an actual silver birdcage on top of the image on the cut apart for a really nice finishing touch. I also did tie an extra little bow onto the ribbon and added another charm down over here. So here's the finished layout with the, just I just tie it on to this. I don't make a big bow. I just add a small piece of ribbon to the already stretched portion on the page. And check out what I did here. I ran the ribbon behind this little bird down here in the corner. It's sort of sweet. It's just a cut here and here. I'll flip it over and show you on the back. There it's running through. The base for layout five is the aqua plane. And we can just sort of create some subdivided space here, beginning with this um, portion of the birdhouse print. And then we'll kind of make an intersection with these cute little birdies. We'll have him run behind. I was going to put some googly eyes on those. In fact, I still have my bag of googly eyes. And I thought they would be really cute. Like, let's put a little googly eye there. Mm, he's adorable. <laughs> Give him a little more personality. Um, we should be able to nest two vertical white and red mats. And I did have them at an angle. One of the things I tend to uh, try to share at expos when I'm doing make and takes is um, when we do put mats together at angles, often what tends to happen is we inadvertently create tangents. Like when the corners of two mats touch, that would be a tangent. To take the tangent away, I just raise one a little higher than the other and make sure they overlap slightly. And then you avoid touching the angles at the corners or outside edges of your layouts as well. And then it creates a very aesthetically pleasing arrangement. These will go up here on the top. Just got to get your spacing figured out. 
And look, we can nest this again too. We've got aqua on red, and we can top that with this little cut apart. Another thing I love to do with wider satiny ribbons is just to cut a very small piece, grab some tape, fold the ribbon in half with the ends slightly uneven, and then you can tape it behind the center of the cut apart and just have this cute little satin loop sort of peeking out from behind your cut apart. Very, very nice. Here's the finished layout five, and I want to show you one other thing that I did. I just cut a little slit on each side of the base or the pole of this birdhouse, and I threaded it with this red satiny ribbon and tied an actual bow with clipped corners. You know, the edges are clipped at an angle, and it just really adds a sweet touch to the lower corner. Here's my little loop of satin ribbon up here at the top. The base for layout four is this orange plane, and I've got everything out of my pocket for layouts three and four. So let's start out with this large piece right here, and then we'll have a nice border strip anchoring across the bottom. And we're going to have a photo mat, a mint green photo mat that will live right around there. And then a row of three smaller turquoise or aqua pieces. This layout also houses the third and final little bird cage. Add that here. How about a little journaling prompt? He fits perfectly. And then slightly overlapped with that, we'll use Don't Just Fly, Soar. I had some finishing touches I want to share with you on my final page. I'm doing this trick quite a bit here um, with the placing of something behind something else. So here's the, the cage that's printed and I just took my craft knife once again and made a slot for my little quote running horizontally and I made, I just cut around this to accommodate the corner of my mint green photo mat to bring, keep this bird cage in the foreground. Love how all this turned out over here and then finished up by just tying a ribbon around that bottom mat once again with that white um, harlequin patterned satin. This is a nice simple assembly. Just bring this larger piece on the top. I'll allow a little bit of the, the paper to show past the horizontal strip. And then I'll do two vertical mint green mats. Once again, raising or lowering rather than doing them uh, with the corners touching. Just make sure they're tucked in a little bit. Behind that we can nest the bird cage onto the aqua we got a nice journaling prompt there. I did staple a piece of folded ribbon to the spot and then add our title. Add a little bird cage right in the upper right corner. And then in the intersection, you can add one more button. And again, that can be glued with club scraps book binding glue that I like to have in a needle tip applicator or um, use your favorite thread or ribbon to that could be really pretty with a thin maybe even the ivory or the white ribbon that's included in your kit. Here's that finished page with everything adhered and my stapled ribbon on the left side. The base for layout two starts out with a nice vertical, big, you know, it's a big statement piece. I like these larger strips. And then we're gonna subdivide our space with an aqua strip nested with one of these little floral leafy borders. And then two angled vertical mats. So just gotta make sure you get your spacing right. And a horizontal mat up here. Now if you notice, this quote is not complete. The reason it's not complete is because we're gonna be adding from the other cut apart, we'll add the word sing in its appropriate spot. And by placing it there, it just kind of causes a little bit of more tension to be brought to that word. I will even improve upon that with just a little loop like we did before of the satin ribbon and I'll tape it to the back. And you can even pop dot that if you'd like. Across the top, I added some bird houses. One idea would be to even cut these out individually or I added some ribbon behind those as well and I'll show you in a minute. But here is also a journaling prompt with the little birdhouse. And I went ahead and attached another little silver birdhouse right next to it, just kind of a, as a finishing touch. So with our finished page here, this is the swallowtail cut ribbon behind this, and I used some foam adhesive circles to make that happen. Same here, and then there's a little, a little charm. Layout one uses all the rest of the stuff. So here we have a, 
our piece that we trimmed from the birdhouse print and then across the top we'll nest one of our border strips with that aqua strip. Give it a little anchoring. I also have this nestable so we have the cut apart nesting on aqua. We'll add two orange horizontal mats and that's why we don't glue things down because you need to be able to move things around so it all fits. For this piece, I actually cut, and this was an easy trim, I cut this from the cut apart and was able to add it, but that's of course optional. Tweet was added over here, and here we have a little charm, and if you'll notice, it's a circle shape, and so is the inside of this birdhouse, so I decided to put it there. And here's the finished page with my little charm added. I did bring this into the foreground. I pop dotted this with a foam adhesive circle and added another loop of ribbon behind the little tweet, just to give it a little bit more character beautiful pages, simply done. Now you've got eight layouts and all you need to do is add your photos and journaling. Have fun with Club Scrap's aviary kit and if you get a chance don't forget to check out the card making tutorial. We're making some really fun cards this month. See you there.